Hey folks, uh, today we're going to start the unit on energy transformations. Uh, and uh, today specifically we're going to talk about uh, potential energy. And uh, for most of this, there's a lot of language here. There'll be a few example problems, but there's a lot of language here um, that we need to walk through. Um, so I do have an overhead here and uh, we'll talk about this. Um, you can either copy this down, or if you're in my classes, uh, I actually have a, a, this on, the, on our website. So uh, potential energy, the first thing here is it is energy of position, which means where a system of particles is at. And notice it says system. One thing by itself cannot have potential energy. It takes at least two objects together to have potential energy. OK, um, the second thing is because we're concerned about <clears throat> differences in potential energy, when something when at least one object travels from one place to another, you can pick anywhere you want for zero. And as we do examples, um, we'll talk a lot about that. But a, a easy example that you might remember from a previous course is if you're looking at gravitational potential energy, um, where you put zero height is up to you in the problem as long as you're consistent with that. Um, potential energy is energy of position or configuration. And more specifically, it's energy of separation. Okay. So the two types of potential energy that you might be familiar with from a previous course are gravitational potential energy and elastic or spring potential energy. For gravitational potential energy, like let's say I'm holding a pen in the air. The uh, the two objects in that situation are the pen and the earth. And they are separated if you lift the pen up, okay? Or the center of the earth is always separated from the pen. <laughs> so um, that's the, what we're talking about for separation. Um, and the farther away the pen is from the earth, the more potential energy the pen earth system has. Also, um, that energy is stored not in the pen which is a common misconception. That energy is actually stored in the gravitational field between the pen and the earth. Both objects are equally important there. For elastic potential energy or spring and rubber band potential energy, um, when you stretch a spring, you are literally separating the metal atoms. And um, you're actually stretching the bonds between each atom ever so slightly. And that is where your energy is stored. And then, believe it or not, it's actually a form of electrical potential energy. Um, but we call it uh, elastic potential energy for a spring because you're usually using, usually using that energy in mechanics. Potential energy. So we're going to use the letter U for that. So some of you may have used PE, you know. Um, but as you t if you uh, go into a more advanced uh, topics or more advanced you know, physics courses, um, they start to use a U in place of that. Um, so for us, we're going we're gonna to talk about potential energy as being a U. Okay? And um, the work done by a conservative force changes potential energy. And if you look down here, there's a negative sign. Okay? So let me give you an example. Let's say I've got a book. And let's say we lift the book to a higher height. Well, gravity was acting down on the book. So from the previous chapter, you know that, that gravity would have done negative work on the book because the uh, displacement is up, that's your delta y, but your force is down, and so that would be negative work. Okay. So the work done by gravity was negative, but we have increased the separation and therefore increased the potential energy of the book-earth system. So in this case, the work done by uh, gravity was negative, therefore the change in potential energy is positive. They will have opposite signs. Um, also, we will be using our integral here um, because oftentimes forces vary with, with uh, separation. Um, so we'll often do that integral sign. So examples that uh, you would have used in previous course uh, was is, uh, potential energy gravitational. And um, off to the side here, I'll do that. So in that case, you're integrating the force of gravity, which is mg. And then usually, um, well, because gravity acts down, we're going to usually do dy. Okay. And then um, if you integrate this, okay, you get mg and then y. 
Okay, and then usually you're going to evaluate that. You're going to have a y naught and a y final, and um, so really this would be mg delta y because normally we're looking for the change in energy. Okay, so the equation that you're probably familiar with is mg, and instead of a y, they'll often put an h there. So all that matters is the height. Okay, and again, where you put zero height is up to you in a problem. Okay. The um, other form of potential energy that you're probably most familiar with is uh, elastic potential energy, which is spring. And in that case, you're integrating the, the equation for the spring force, which is kx times a dx. Um, the, any other dimension is not going to matter. If you're stretching a spring out, it doesn't matter if you move it up or down or not. Um, and then for this one, you get one half k x squared. The integral of x is x squared over two, so you get your one half k x squared. So that's where that comes from. Okay. And uh, same thing, by the way. So let's say here's our spring. Okay. Let's say it's attached to the wall. And let's say you pull it this way. Okay. So the displacement, your delta x, is to the right. While you're pulling it, the spring is going to pull to the left. It's trying to go back to where it was. So that will give you negative work, which would be a positive change in potential energy. So it turns out that this sign here is going to be absolutely critical. When, when a conservative force does work, you get a, an opposite sign change in potential energy. Um, now, I do have one example to do in our notes. So let's say I give you some force, and it looks like this. Let's say I tell you it's a, a conservative force and it equals 3x in the i-hat direction. And let's say we, we move around in a coordinate system with that force acting on us. And let's say your starting position is 3i minus 6j meters. And let's say your final position is 5i minus 2j meters. And I ask you to find what's the work done by that conservative force and what's the change in potential energy okay, of, our, of our system. Um, so for work, work done by any force is the integral of F dot dr okay, um, from the beginning point to the end point. Now, we're going to be careful here. We're integrating the, the force is 3x. Okay, so what do we put for the little d here? Which direction matters? Well, only the dx matters, okay? There's no force in the y or the z direction, so we don't care about the y or the z direction. What do we put here and here in our integral? Well, um, the only coordinates that matter are the x-coordinates. The y-coordinates here, they don't matter because the force is acting only in the x-direction. So we're starting at 3 and we're ending at 5. The x-coordinate starts at 3 and ends at 5. Okay, so uh, the integral of 3x is 3x squared over 2, and we're evaluating that from 3 to 5. Uh, we plug our 5 in, you get 25 times 3, you get 75 over 2, minus, so if you plug our 3 in, you get 3 squared 9, 27 over 2, which would be uh, 48 over 2, which is positive 24 joules. So that force did positive 24 joules of work on our system. What's, so that was, that's the work done by that conservative force. Okay. What's our change in potential energy? Well, delta U is just going to be negative, the work done by that conservative force. So it'd be negative 24 joules. So like if this were um, a spring, then the spring is, you're, you're letting the spring uh, go, go toward its equilibrium position. If this were like a system, like a gravity type system, you have an object that's falling down. Uh, so it's the grab, like for instance, if I had a table here and I lowered a book from the top of the table to the bottom, okay, the force of gravity would be doing positive work as you, as a book was traveling downward. And so um, you'd be losing potential energy. So that's, just, that's a kind of a similar analogous thing. So um, I hope that intro was, was useful and uh, thank you very much.